The last round of GNCC racing was packed with drama. And he goes to the outside and takes the lead again. And Wibley turned the trick on the motocross track and steals the John Penton GNCC victory. And we're set for another barn burner today. Welcome to Racer TV's coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. This is America's largest off-road racing series for motorcycles and ATVs. And today we're visiting arguably America's most famous motocross track, the legendary Unadilla Valley Sports Center in upstate New York. Jason Wygant, your host, joined by a massive crowd of riders, both pro and amateur. This is traditionally one of the biggest stops on the tour and also one of the toughest. You see these frame deep, foot peg deep ruts, and this is just in our amateur race that's taking place this morning. If you want to say that you ran Unadilla, the best way to do it is come join us at GNCC Racing. But you probably won't be able to compete with these guys. The best off-road riders in the world gathered on the row one for our XC1 Pro Class, and that race is just about to get started. Close championship fight. Only 25 points between that man, Paul Whibley, in third. A few points up to Charlie Mullins in second, and only 14 more separating Mullins from your series leader, Josh Strang. It is a three-way dogfight for this GNCC championship. Who's going to take advantage and come out on top after three hours of grueling racing today over some of the worst terrain imaginable? Let's get ready to go GNCC racing. And it looks like Wibley on the number three, and pro FMF Yamaha going to control it into turn one and nail the Motorsport Whole Shot Award. $250 for your 2009 GNCC champion, the veteran out of New Zealand out front early. A bunch of KTM riders hustling behind him. All three of the factory FMF KTM riders. There's Mullins in front of Caleb Russell on our Amsoil helmet camera, and right behind them, Corey Buttrick. So the KTM boys in orange flying in formation and going after Wibley. Not as good a start for your series points leader, Josh Strang. But again, nine laps, three hours of racing through the mud, through the tight woods, and of course on this motocross track here, anything can happen. And uh, Russell already got a face full of mud, and they're going to be dealing with vision problems, of course, throughout the day as well. This is your XC2 class back at the start. 250cc bikes as opposed to the 450s in the big class. And some of the young guns of the sport battling it out here. Whole shot gonna go to Morgan Moss on the Husky, back by Fred Andrews Racing. And you can see the aggression of these kids in XC2 early. They push the pace a lot more than the very patient riders in the XC1 Pro Class who just came through these sections. A nice mix of both two strokes and four strokes. If you have a 250, you're legal to race this class. Of course, you've got to be fast enough to meet the pro requirements of GNCC Racing. There are no questions of the background of men like Wibley and Mullins, Russell, Buttrick, Strang, and that is Jimmy Cherritt coming through next. All these riders are the best of the best. Most of them have won races at this level before, and it looks like Russell has taken over the lead here. Russell, who is the two-time champion of that XC2 class, has had a great rookie year in XC1, and he's moved into the number one spot with Mullins right behind him, and Wibley loses a little bit of ground. Remember, Wibley and Russell had that epic battle down to the wire at our last race in Ohio. Then it is Jarrett, Chris Bach, and Jedediah Haynes, young rider out of Pennsylvania who has uh, made leaps and bounds this year. And same thing for Russell, who leaps and bounds his way over the sky shot. I didn't know if they'd be able to jump that thing on the cross-country bikes. But indeed, your top three make it four. There goes Jarrett, all able to clear this big leap. Bach and Haynes over it next. And let's get the radar out on that man, Nate Canny, a New York native who has won this race before. And then Bad Duvall throwing it sideways. Here's your Suzuki slow motion replay showing you Wibley edging out a pack of KTM riders to grab the Motosport.com whole shot award. And there is Moss leading the XC2 field to the line. And 
and picking up the Motosport.com whole shot award in that division. Starts are critical in cross country racing, but it's really the rider who's willing to let it all hang out on the first lap who reaps the spoils because they don't get to practice on these tracks. They get to walk the track or mountain bike it, but the first time you ever ride a motorcycle on it is in the race, and it appears that Russell and Mullins are willing to be a little more aggressive early than Wibley. That's how they've taken the lead from him. Looks like Bach has gotten around Cherry. Cherry won this race last year, and he's running inside the top five early on the Geico Honda. Obviously, he likes his track, but nobody likes it more than that man, Nate Kenny, who wants to go after the leader. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series, which is truly a sport for the everyman. If you've got an ATV or a dirt bike, come and join us. I'm sure this type of riding looks familiar to you. It's the same type of things you do for fun out in the woods with your buddies, but here you can do it in competition. Our ATV classes are certainly competitive. Even if you've got a utility machine, come out and race it with us. Here are some of the upcoming events of the tour. We're swinging through Ohio and Indiana, and then we'll have a special double header event for our finale at the legendary Loretta Lynn Ranch in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. Right now up front here in upstate New York, it's Caleb Russell leading his teammate, Charlie Mullins. They are both on the factory FMF KTM team. Russell rides a 350. Oh, it goes down, and the 450 bike of Mullins about to make the move for the lead. In fact, it'll be a drag race in and out of the woods. Here we go, and Mullins able to take the lead. Now, they tell me in a straight line that 350 is able to run with the 450. It's just the way it delivers power. You really got to time your shifts right, use the clutch, be aggressive. That's what Russell's trying to do. But Mullins is able to edge him out. So a little crash from the youngster has allowed Mullins to get by. But I'll tell you what, this pace, they are marching away from the rest of the field. Chris Bach has climbed up to third on the beta. However, he is nearly a minute down from these two KTM riders. They want to settle in a private duel. There is Bach in the number three position. Great riding by him. This kid from Indiana has moved up from about sixth to third. And here's Wibley in fourth, but the big shakeup, big news here. Corey Buttrick and Josh Strang have crashed into each other. Buttrick is out of the race what we believe is a concussion as we watch the two KTM teammates continue to battle up front. Russell in front of Mullins, but a bigger deal for the championship. Strang, your series leader, broke a chain, actually borrowed a mountain bike from a spectator to get back to the pits and tell his crew he needed help. When they got out there, they realized the chain had broken because his sprocket had bent in the crash. And here is Russell now back in front of Mullins, by the way. But anyway, they had to do major repairs to that Suzuki. They, they got the fresh chain on the bent sprocket well enough to nurse the bike back to the pits. They're working on it right now. But Strang has no chance of winning this race and a major chance of giving up the series lead by the time today's race is over. Credit to him for bicycling back to the pits to try to get the parts he needed to repair the machine. But terrible luck for him as his main championship adversary, Mullins, has retaken the lead from Russell. Russell's gonna push. It is way too early in the series to even think about team tactics. If Caleb Russell can win this race, he's gonna do it over Mullins. They're not gonna tell Mullins what the situation is with Strain. They're not gonna have him pull over. And there you see Russell has taken the lead again. What a battle between the two KTM riders. And another battle shaping up here for third. You have Bach and Wibley. Wibley just pressing, pushing, keeping the heat on, hoping that the young rider makes a mistake. This is an all-time ride for Jedediah Haynes. Holding off some of the veterans of this game, like Jarrett. Back to our leaders, now heading on to the motocross track. This track is all sorts of chewed up after the amateur riders race this morning, as well as our youth division. Both of these men are graduates of those series. They both raced mini cycles in GNCC racing. They grew up with a dream of winning this championship and winning these races. And all their hard work is paying off right now. They got a nice solid lead over Bach. But you can't say enough about this first year factory beta effort. Beta, a legend in trials riding, has now dipped into the off-road dirt bike market. And what a job they have done developing in this bike around Bach. Look at this. Another battle, and now it is Mullins back in front of Russell. It's got to be fun for the two teammates 
who both make their racing and training homes in North Carolina to battle like this for the lead. Who's gonna come out on top? We've got lots of racing yet to come. Stay with us. Welcome back to Racer TV's coverage. Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Riders strutting their motocross stuff here at Unadilla. Charlie Mullins is your leader right now over Caleb Russell. There is Russell in the number two spot. Staying close, keeping the heat on. A change for the number three position. Nathan Canny, New York's own, has climbed up to third. And Canny is always strong on this track. He's won this race before, and he came oh so close to getting the W here last year. But he's gonna have to hustle because Mullins is riding a beautiful race out front. Nice line there, picking the right side where he was going to the left earlier. And you've gotta keep your eyes open. You've gotta realize that with 1,300 plus riders racing out here, the track, oh, and uh, Russell getting stuck near the top of that hill. And that's the kind of opportunity that Nate Candy wants to seize on. And Candy's gonna go straight across the top. He's got Bach right behind him. We know Russell and Mullins went strong early. We will see if Canny and Bach are able to reel them in late. And what I was alluding to earlier is, with all the riders that race on this track, the course is going to change tremendously each time the riders hit it. Wibley here is at the number five position. You hit one corner, and that's the way you want to attack it. Then you get there again the next lap around about 25 minutes later, and it's completely different. Mullins will also have to deal with lap traffic, and this is one of the tougher tracks for the lap riders. It's a little bit shorter lap time than most of the races on this tour, and we have a few more riders out there than usual, so there's more traffic. The other riders out here are amateur riders. They don't get to ride and train full time. So later in the race, they're going to be fatigued, but they are still battling in their class, so they're not going to just pull over. Look at that corner speed from Nate Canny as he rolls into the Clockwork Orange WMR Racing Planet Fitness KTM pits. He's getting fuel. Bach on the beta doing the same. Bach also grabbing a fresh set of goggles. There is Canny out of the pits. Bach can see him up ahead, and he gets out in about the same amount of time. The Yamaha crew there on the right waiting for Wibley to come into the number five spot. And there's Wibley's wife, Catherine, on the left, flagging the rider down. It's time for gas. Pit strategy going to be very difficult to stay on top of today for any of these teams. We normally do six or seven lap races. Because this track is a little bit shorter, we're going to do probably nine today. So it's a little more difficult figuring out how to split up the pit stops. Although it looks like now into the woods, both Bach and Wibley have gotten around Canny, so Canny must have made a mistake. No doubt he was pushing the pace to try to bridge the gap up to Mullins and Russell, and it did not pay off for him. Mullins still in the lead, Russell still in second. And I have to think that Russell may be saving something for later in the race. At our last event, this man, Wibley, shadowed him all the way down to the last couple of turns, and Wibley just had a little more energy left in the tank there goes Candy, there goes Bach. Wibley had a little more energy. He basically wore the kid down and stole the win in the very latter stages of the race. I'm sure Russell has learned from that. He's going to let Mullins run with the pressure, run the lead pace throughout the day, and we'll see if the kid, originally from Ohio, saves a little something for the end to go back after Mullins. But look at how effortless Mullins is. He's got his lines dialed in. You don't see many mistakes from him. And that's to Charlie Mullins. That's dangerous. We call it check out Charlie. If he gets the lead, gets to ride pressure free, he can ride this pace. Well, forget us, three hour race. He can probably do it for six. So Russell, very aggressive, has to ride that 350 KTM very hard. He likes that bike in the tight woods. It's a little bit more uh, nimble, a little bit more maneuverable than the big 450 that Mullins is riding. Here is Wibley, and as we suspected, Latter half of the race, he has come on strong. He dropped back as far as fifth. He is now up to third and has opened up a little bit of a gap over Bach and Canny. It's the midpoint of the race and you gotta think it's the calm before the storm. All five of these riders putting themselves in position for victory. Stay with us. And Charlie Mullins is now into the throes of lap traffic here at Unadilla. Jason Wygand giving you the call here on Racer TV. And here is Caleb Russell in the number two spot. He's got an advantage with this lap traffic. Once Mullins gets by them, then they know they are about to go a lap down. They'll probably be 
covering off across the side of the trail, making it a little bit easier for everyone else to get by. And look at how much closer Wibley is than he was at one time. The Axeman can never be counted out in these races. He is so strong, so fit, and the three-hour format really lends itself to his style. Mullins knows that he has had some last lap battles with Wibley, as has Russell. You see Russell, they've dug down to the tree roots now, and it is a rough ride. He's got feet off the pegs. That's taking a lot of energy out of him to try to maintain this pace as the course gets rougher, the lap traffic gets thicker. There's Charlie Mullins' dad, Big Charlie, there on the right side of the course cheering his boy on. Of course, they have a golden opportunity to make up huge points in the series standings today. Your series points leader coming in, Josh Strang, had a big crash for Corey Buttrick earlier in the race, damaged his motorcycle. It took three laps for them to get the bike fixed. He's now back on the track, but three laps down. So it looks like Strang is only going to score a handful of points today, if any. And Mullins is in position. If he can hold off Russell, Wibley, Bach, Canny, and the rest, Mullins could score maximum points today. And that means he could leave with the series points lead. Mullins doesn't want to think about that right now. Too many obstacles to worry about. Race the track. Worry about the math when this event is over. And from what we are hearing, this is going to be the final lap. There is Wibley, nice line, to, choosing to go to the right side, and he's going to make up a little more ground on Russell. However, time is running out. We're going to get nine laps in within the three-hour allotted time span. Russell knows it. I thought he might save something for the end. He didn't have enough to challenge Mullins, but he might have enough to stabilize the gap with Wibley, who edged him out at the finish at our last race. At one point, Wibley made up about 10 seconds a lap on Russell, but Russell has stabilized that the last couple of laps, and I don't think Wibley's going to get him. And I don't know if anyone is going to get Mullins a clutch performance where his championship rival, Josh Strang, had trouble. Mullins is going to cruise to victory here at Unadilla and retake the series points lead. And kudos to Caleb Russell for the second race in a row. He finishes second. You've got to figure this kid is going to get a win in this series before long. And you see the clock there on his left side. Two hours, 52 minutes into this race. These boys have got to be tired after racing so hard at a rough track like this. There's Wibley to round out the podium. Let's go down to Krista Shaw. A late race charge to a third place finish for Paul Wibley today. Paul, how did you feel going into the race? And are you happy with the end result? Uh, actually, I'm pretty happy with third. I've been a little bit sick all week, so um, I wasn't too sure how today was going to go. Um, got the whole shot, so that made my job a little easier. Um, it took me a long time to get comfortable out there, so I dropped back a long way, but kind of picked some guys off near the end of the race and pretty happy with third place. Here are the results. Canny edges Bach in a great battle for fourth. Last year's race winner, Jarrett, finished sixth. Let's send it back to the podium. A very solid effort from Caleb Russell today. Caleb, what do these last two podium finishes do for your confidence moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's good. Uh, you just kind of get a, a sense of being, you know, up front, and uh, you know you can do it. But, uh, yeah, I had a good day. I didn't get the best of starts, but um, I put myself into a good position, and uh, I was just – I got real tight in the first three laps. I, got, I was just trying to keep Charlie behind me, and he got away from me, and I knew he was going to take off. But uh, I just couldn't – I didn't have that pace right then. But um, – my arms, uh, I got rid of my arm pump and I uh, started catching up a little bit and we kind of stayed the same throughout the whole race and uh, all in all it's a good day and I'm pretty happy to get second. Yeah, well done and look at the damage in the championship standing strength. He scores 13th place today. Mullins takes the win and the points lead. Here's Charlie. Charlie Mullins taking the win here today at Unadilla. Charlie, you and Caleb were battling it out the first couple laps, and then you got around him and just ran with it. Was that your strategy for the day? Yeah, you know, it was just uh, get a good start and put myself in good position. And, you know, race kind of reminded me a lot of South Carolina this year when me and Caleb did the same thing, kind of broke away. Then the um, you know, third lap I got around him and uh, just kind of put on a little sprint and got away from him and, you know, just kind of pretty much rode my own race from there. And, and I was able to take it into the finish, so it, uh, it feels good to get another one this year. All right, well, you did a great job out there. Congratulations. All right, All right thanks. 
Thanks, Krista Shaw. Let's give you the Can-Am race recap. Paul Wibley, who had won our last race in Ohio, grabbed the whole shot, but an army of KTM riders quickly ganged up on him, led by Caleb Russell, who had the lead over Charlie Mullins, and those two pushed each other. On the motocross track, in the woods, all over this place, and quickly they had built a big lead over the third place man, Chris Bach. Wibley would bound a charge to get around Nate Canny and Bach for third, and we'll give you the update here on the XC2 class. Epic battle between the Husqvarna of Jason Thomas and the Ampro Yamaha of Jordan Ashburn. Ashburn makes a pass with just a mile to go on the last lap to take his second victory in a row in that division. Charlie Mullins pulls away from Russell down the stretch, takes the win and the points lead. This championship battle is heating up, so you gotta stay with us each week on Racer TV. For Krista Shaw, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.